So hey all, I want to, in this video, take a look at the uh, Wi-Fi modem built into the VT132. So a little bit of background here. The RC2014 architecture uh, has two different serial buses. So transmit and receive on the actual little backplane the card's plugged into. I have a two SIO card in mind, so it implements two serial ports. Uh, the main port here, you know, that we're looking at here on screen here is port 80. And then on port 80, uh, two is that modem. So port 80 is going to the VT132 emulator itself, and then port 82 goes to that Wi-Fi modem. So what can we do with that modem? Let, let's jump in here and take a peek. So on the machine, uh, mistype, I have Qterm. This is actually a version of Qterm that was compiled to, to talk on port 82. I also want to comment, as I have in several of videos, I'm using a VGA capture device. Uh, coming off the VGA on the VT132, and there's some lag, uh, some noticeable lag. So you may notice the key clicks that you're hearing don't necessarily line up to what's happening on the screen. That lag is solely due to the VGA capture device. Uh, the VT132 is very fast to respond, uh, works very well. So let's go in here and connect to a BBS. So I'm going to run Qterm. Qterm is a terminal emulator. Essentially, this gets me a connection to port uh, 82. Uh, the escape character in Qterm is control Y. I can use that to exit uh, Qterm. So if I do a control Y and hit Q, it'll exit Qterm. Let's run Qterm again. So Qterm is connected to uh, essentially a Hayes modem emulation. And so the at, the AT command was an at command. So back in the day, uh, let's talk a little bit about modems. Back in the day, I took a computer graphics class that would have been 1979 or 80. And this was literally a, a, a Tektronics graphics terminal, uh, an acoustic coupled modem. So you actually pick up a physical phone, dialed the number, listen for the tone from the modem, drop the handset down into the modem itself. There was a couple of cups the handset set into. And if you were lucky, you got a connection. And then from the terminal, you could log into what I believe was a deck 10 or deck 20 on the other side computer. And the entire goal of that class was to draw a circle on the screen. Uh, modems progressed to where you had smart modems. Uh, the Hayes smart modem with this AT command set. And, and this is ba based on that command set with a whole bunch of extensions to it. So let's look at some of the extensions. Uh, there's an AT plus W question mark down here. Uh, so that Corey's join status. There's a command here that will actually define, here it is, no, that's not it, that's a dial. Right here, AT plus W uh, equals, and right here you can give that modem the SSID of your Wi-Fi network and the password, and that'll connect the Wi-Fi on the ESP32 to your wireless network. And what that does is establish, you know, from my RC2014, a direct Wi-Fi connection onto the network. Uh, there's a bunch of commands here. You saw me hit at dollar sign. That brought up this help. We can hang up the modem here. We can dial out. But right now, if we look at ATW, I think it's S. So AT plus W, actually it's dollar sign. We'll get back my current IP address, which is zero. And that's because even though I'm connected to the Wi-Fi network here at home, I haven't actually... It's... I haven't actually connected yet to get an IP address. So let's go ahead and connect AP or AT plus W plus. And that'll tell it to connect to my Wi-Fi network. And that's using that SSID uh, and password that was stored earlier. And if we do an AT plus W dollar sign, we should get back an IP address at this point. So we've got back an IP address in my wireless network. So we were connected and talking to the internet basically through that connection. So let's, let's dial up a, a BBS here. So I'm going to do an at D for dial. And the BBS name is 1984bbs.net. And this should reach out and connect to it. Uh, and I need to hit escape twice here. And I'm actually bringing this up the way it is. I'm going to tell it that it's MS-DOS CP437. And I'm going to show you a little something here. So here is the login screen, very much as it would have, you know, as it would have been back in the day. Uh, I don't want to create an account. 
I want to actually log in as a user. I may have an extra, may have typed an extra character here that's going to cause it to cycle again. No, I keep wanting to hit return. This is that VG emulation or VD, VG character font emulation. Uh, let's go ahead and, and jump into setup here just so you can see how I've got the system configured. So on setup, if we go to setup C, we'll see uh, that I've picked PC code page 437 here. So I get the VGA fonts and I've got the VGA palette selected down below. Uh, if we change this, let's just change uh, back to the deck font and exit out here. And what you'll see is kind of this mess, and that's because we're using the wrong font. So, you, you know, for this to work correctly, you need to be in the wrong or the, the correct font. So let me change the font back to the VGA. You'll see it shift there and get back out of the, the setup screens here. And we're at the BBS. So... My login name is STB for Shadowtron blog. You don't need to know my password. Hopefully that's my password. Uh, oh, I've got caps lock on. And we're in. And what you're seeing here are, you know, the, the color graphics here, uh, the lines and boxes, those kind of things. And, and that's the... AMC escape sequence is occurring, which is one more thing I need to, to hit, hit here so that you're successful with this. Let's get back into setup. And I had to go in and configure. When I find it here, okay, I'm set to v, uh, WordStar VT100. Uh, I should probably be set to. although this is working fine, to ANSI VT100 is probably the best setting for this. And remember, you can configure this how you want to configure it, and then do a Shift S to save the setup. So if you're just always doing BBS dialing, you'd want to save the setup that works. But let's get back to the BBS and do some exploring. So there's some one-liners here. People are posting one-liners. Uh, there's another BBS, another BBS listing. I'll go ahead and oh, I'm not going to add a one-liner, so let's just pick no. I have one email. Let's go ahead and read it. I've just joined the BBS in the last hour, so everything here is new. I needed a, a BBS. You have one. Read them now. Yes. So here's an email from the sysop of the BBS to me, uh, welcoming me to the BBS. Very nice. Let me actually go ahead and remove me. I was going to do this earlier, so you're not looking at my ugly mug here as we're looking at these screens. So, you know, there it is. This is the only message we have. Let me quit out. Uh, let's go ahead and quit here. We'll hit G to say goodbye. I want to yes get disconnected and we'll see another great ANSI graphic scroll by. I'm going to go ahead and hang up, make sure the modem's hung up. These need to be capital, ATH will hang up the modem. And apparently we were already hung up. And let's go ahead and dial again at dial 1984. BBS.net. And you hit escape twice to prove I'm a human being. I'm going to use the MS DOS code page again. I had my ugly mug over the top of the graphic here, and that's why I logged back in so you could see this full graphic and its glory. It's 1984. I was running a BBS in 1984. Uh, probably off an Atari ST at the time. So let's go ahead and log in again. Take caps lock off so I can type in my password. I 
we're back in. Uh, I'm still not going to post a greeting. We've looked at the mail. I don't want to read the mail. We can do things like see the last 10 callers. Uh, you can see me coming in from Kent, Washington. You can see somebody from Insta. It, it, Instable, I can't even say it. Instable, I can't say it. Istanbul, wow, could not say it. From Paris. Uh, pretty cool. BBS has typically had file areas. It looks like this one does too. Let's see what files are available here. So back in the day, it was, you know, BBS has passed files around, often cracked games, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we definitely had files on the BBS IRAM. Look, there's a program here, PM, whatever it is. Bot check version 1.2 uh, for Win, Linux, and Mac. So there's the second part of apparently the entry for that file. We're back to the top, and I'm going to quit here. There's groups or search for files, uh, set scan bases. I don't know what a lot of this does. Download file list. Well, new files will be all files probably to me. So in uploads, there's 25 files. And I'll hit an extra key and it scrolls around. So, you know, here's a little bit of what we can do. We should be able to quit back to the main menu. I think there's only one door game on the machine. I haven't actually played it yet. That is Blackjack. Let's go ahead and see what Blackjack looks like. Blackjack. Want to play a game? Sure. I'll bet $100. And... I think I'm going to have to stand on 18. Ah, dealer's got 11. I'm still going to stand. I'm not really good at blackjack. Well, already lost 100 bucks. Let's just go all in. Bet 900. Dealer's got a 5. I've got an 18 again. Well, I'm going to stand on the 18. Dealer busted. Awesome. I'm now ahead. $900. So nice. Let's, uh, let's just go all in again. Not real money. I'm going to have to hit. 15, uh, dealer's got 12, he's most likely got me here, I'm going to have to hit again, uh, that should be 21, and it sure is, so I'm going to stand on that, dealer busted, wow, I'm up to $3,600, or maybe I need to go to Vegas, we will lose it all here at some point. Nineteen, I'm going to stand on. And dealer busted. Wow. So here's an example of, of what, you know, what was called a door game back in the day. Uh, if I was being smart, I'd just bet sixty-two hundred and uh, and have my original thousand dollars on hand. Going to have to stand. Hope the dealer busts. Ah, dealer won, and I'm broke. Well, there it is. There's a lot of door games. Uh, oh my God, look at the uh, Deja Vu, who was the sysop on this. 20 million. Yeah. He had a good score there. Holy moly. So there's kind of a quick introduction. Let's uh, quit back to the main menu. 
Every BBS is going to be different, different graphics, different games. Uh, I'll just go ahead and goodbye here. And yep, I want to get this connected. Call back soon. Brings back a lot of memories. I spent a lot of time online back in the day playing on BBSs. And this is just, you know, just really cool to be able to drop that VT-132, you know, into my RC-2014 and just have this native there, you know, on that second serial port. And again, you know, the VT-132, I'm going to embed one, I think, build it in or maybe do a standalone. I haven't decided yet for my Altair. And I've got TTY0 and TTY1 on my Altair, you know, and I'll be able to use TTY1 uh, with the modem here on the Altair and on my actual Altair with, you know, a 8080 processor from the 70s, et cetera, et cetera, be able to do this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun to be back on, on old hardware with really solid VT100 emulation and this Wi-Fi modem and to be able to play. So... I think that kind of ends the demonstration here. I think if I do an ATH again, it's already hung up. It's got to be in caps lock. Just like it was back in the day. Uh, AT dollar to bring up help here. I think it's AT plus W minus to break my Wi-Fi. To bring back disconnected. And there we are. We've gone full circle here. I can do a control Y to get the attention of uh, Q-Term and hit Q to quit Q-Term and I'm back in CPM. So there's kind of the full cycle. So I, I hope this was interesting. Uh, it's a very compelling reason, honestly, to get a VT-132. You know, if you're after a VT-100, it's going to be totally awesome. But this just is like icing on the cake. Really neat. You can do things here like set up Kermit and do Kermit transfers, those kind of things. Uh, haven't, excuse me, got that far yet, but at some point I will. Uh, anyhow, I will, uh, I guess, wrap this one up here. Uh, we'll talk soon.